fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Jeb Veely owned the Last Chance Mine, but lived in Badger City, 30 miles away. On the first of the month, he went as usual to the bank, drew a large sum in paper money, and took it to his home. While a man from the mine stood watching... Beely made up the payroll and put the money into a leather sack. Well, there you are, Pete. All set. Just sign this receipt for the cash. Well, I'll sign it, but Dad read it, Mr. Veely. I don't like signing for so much money. If someone robbed the stage, I'd be responsible. It'd take me a mighty long time to pay back $10,000 out of my salary. <laughs> oh, nonsense, Pete. I couldn't hold you responsible for the loss. Well, all the same, I worry from the time I signed these things until I turned the cash over to the foreman. It's just a precaution, that's all, Pete. <laughs> just good business practice. You sure take plenty of precautions, Mr. Veely. Well, you better hurry, Pete. It's time for the stage to leave. A few miles west of Badger City, the trail had been cut through a dense forest. Trees and underbrush grew close to both sides of the road. When the stagecoach reached that point, a tall, thin man leaped into view and fired a warning shot. Hold up there! Rain in those horses or I'll blast you from the seat! Oh, hold oh, there! Oh, 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 oh. A bandana with holes cut for the eyes concealed the man's face. Don't shoot! Don't shoot, mister! Throw out that payroll money. All right, all right. Hold your fire. We don't want to die. Here's the cash. Now get going. Make it faster, I'll let you have it. Get it! Get it! A few minutes after the highwayman had ridden away, the Lone Ranger and Tonto came out of the woods on the opposite side of the trail and drew their horses to a halt. Who's over? Who's over? Who's over? Who's over? Gunfire. Come from near here, Kimasabi. Tonto, these tracks are fresh. The stage passed since the rain stopped. We not hear stage. We were too far away. We barely heard the gunfire. Maybe gunfire means stage held up. We ride along the trail and see if there's any break in the stride of the horses. Come on, sir. Get them up, Scout. 
In less than a hundred yards, the masked man saw where the stagecoach horses had been brought to a halt. Oh, 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 easy, oh, steady, oh, oh, easy, easy, easy. We'll look around, Paulo. The boot marks of a man who had stepped from the shelter of the trees were clearly visible in the moist dirt. A moment later, the Lone Ranger and Toto found where the highwayman had waited. There they found a knife that had probably been used to cut eye holes in a bandana. The bits of cloth that had been cut out lay on the ground. Uh, here. Here, initials, a knife. H.D. Toto, they might mean Henry Dorgan. Ah. Him run cafe in Badger City. He's run cafes in many places. And this knife prove him hold up stage. Not necessarily. But take more than a knife to convict that man. He's very smart. And we take knife to sheriff in Badger City? I don't know the sheriff, Toto. But I do know Andrew Larkin. We'll call on him. Uh, him lawyer. Yes. He'll make the most of this evidence. First, we'll try to follow the tracks through the woods and see where the robber went. It was after dark when the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the home of Andrew Larkin. Larkin was a fine-looking man who lived with his son and daughter. He examined the knife and the bits of cloth from the bandana. The report of the robbery came in some time ago. Jeb Vili's payroll was stolen, approximately $10,000. Who reported it? Vili's messenger. He borrowed a horse from a ranch and rode back. The sheriff went out and brought in word that he had found the tracks of three men. Only one man committed the robbery. The other tracks were made by Toto and me. The sheriff tried to follow the tracks through the woods, but he very quickly lost them. Toto and I followed them until dark. They led in a roundabout way toward Badger City. Yes, these initials on the knife, H.D. You have a newcomer in Badger City. Oh? His name is Henry Dorgan. I hope, Larkin, you can prove he committed the robbery. Why? Because in several towns he sold liquor to Indians. But has never been punished for it. He's too smart. He's been punished for it here? He has? Yes, I got evidence against him. He paid a fine. He should be jailed for life. Well, I'll talk to the sheriff. If Dorgan committed the robbery, we'll do our best to convict him. You may be sure of that. Good. Will you and Tonto be nearby? No, Larkin. We're on our way to call on a friend, a padre. Oh, I'm sorry. I'd like my son to meet you both. Is he here? No. He and his sister are visiting in Mud Flats until next week. Perhaps we'll meet the next time. I do hope so. Randy is a good boy. We uh, left our horses in the rear of the house. We'll go out that way. That evening, under cover of darkness, Hank Dorgan buried the boots that would have fitted the footprints on the trail and the bandana that covered his face. When the sheriff called at the cafe, he admitted that the knife was his and said it had been lost for several weeks. The hold-up man must have found it, Sheriff, and left it at the scene to throw the blame on me. I suppose you have an alibi for the time of the robbery. I was home taking a nap the same as every afternoon. Old Windy, my housekeeper, will swear to that. So that's your story, eh? That's right, Sheriff. But I'll be on the lookout. If any of that marked money turns up in my cafe, I'll let you know. Hey, what do you know about marked money? Vili told me about it. He said every one of the stolen bills had a little red circle in the corner. So he asked me to watch for it. Oh, Vili told you, eh? Yeah. I wish Billy would tend to his gold mine and let me handle the robberies. The robbery went unsolved. It was about one year later when the lawyer, Andrew Larkin, died after a lingering illness. Two days following the funeral, his son Randy met John Morley, owner of the stage line, for dinner in Dorgan's Cafe. Yeah, I'm sorry, Randy, that you find it necessary to give up your plans to study law. Oh, I don't mind, Mr. Morley. My dad was a mighty fine lawyer, but he never got rich. Oh, just a minute, Randy. Uh, what is it, Dorgan? You want me to put these two dinners on your bill, Mr. Morley? Well, yes, of course. And uh, speaking of bills, as a matter of $20... I know what you're getting at, Dorgan. You've told several people my dad died owing you $20. Well, I don't believe it. I don't think he ever came into this cafe to buy anything from you. All right, then. Let it go. I can afford to lose the money. I don't intend to let it go. I brought the $20 for you. Here, take it. Now, I don't want to hear any more about Dad owing you money. Well, I never expected to collect that debt. You know, one of these days I might do a little paying back on my own hook. And not with cash. Randy, that sounded like a threat. Oh, he hated my dad. 
Now that Dad's gone, he probably hates my sister Kit and me. Dorgan will never forget that your father took him to court and pressed a case that resulted in a $1,000 fine. Are you sure you can afford that $20, Randy? Oh, yes, sir. I brought it on purpose to pay that... that pull cat. You said you had to go to work. Did your father leave anything? He left the house to my sister and me and a little cash in a tin box. He used up most of his ready cash during the last few months when he was sick. Any debts? Well, he left the names of two people he owed money to in St. Louis. With his cash and what I'd earned working part-time for you, I managed to pay up everything. I sent the money to St. Louis this morning. How are you fixed now? Well, I'll have to get a job within a couple of weeks, or Kit and I are likely to go hungry. I sure would like to drive one of your stagecoaches. I can handle it, Mr. Morley. I know I can. Well, I've no doubt you can drive a six-in-hand, Randy. Well, you've seen me. On a regular run, there's more than just driving the horses. Driver must be a man who can be trusted with large sums of money. Well, you can trust me. <laughs> well, I don't question your honesty, lad. I need men who are fast with a gun. You know, we sometimes carry a great deal of cash. Remember the Vili robbery? I'd have shot it out with that crook. I can handle a gun. Well, if you were a few years older... I... Well, I'll think it over, Randy. Oh, thanks, Mr. Hey, Larkin. Mark. Yeah, what is it, Dorgan? You just gave me a $20 bill. Well... Is this the bill? Well, I guess so. It looks like it. Seems to be torn the same way. This is the bill you gave me. There's no doubt of it. Yeah, what about it? For the past year, the law's been waiting for one of these bills to turn up. What do you mean? I mean this is part of Jeb Vili's stolen what? payroll money. Well, it can't be. No? Well, see for yourself. You here, you take a look, Mr. Morley. Yeah. I reckon you were told to watch for paper money with a small red circle in one corner. Mm. Yes, yes, I was. Mm -hmm. You're looking at it. I, I didn't see that mark when I had the bill. No one had noticed it if they weren't looking for it. How much more cash do you have, Larkin? If you're hinting that I stole that I'm money. not accusing you. Maybe it was stolen by the man who gave it to you. Where'd you get it? I got it from the... I don't remember. Oh, so you don't remember. I suppose you get so many $20 bills, you can't remember where they come from. Uh, no, I just can't remember Listen, what... if you didn't steal the payroll money, you'll tell where you got this cash. Unless you're trying to protect the thief. Oh, no. I... Now, see here, Dorgan. I'm not even sure that's the same bill I gave you. You admit it as much. It's torn the same way. Randy, you'd better tell where you got that money. No, I, I can't. Then you are shielding someone, huh? No, I'm not. I'm not shielding anyone. I just don't remember. That's all I don't remember. I'll turn this over to the sheriff and tell him where I got it. I reckon he'll be wanting to ask you some questions. All right, let him. Let him ask all the questions he wants to. I can't tell the sheriff any more than I've told you. And if the sheriff wants me, he knows where to find me. I'll be at home. Word that one of the stolen bills had finally appeared spread fast through Badger City. Some people thought that Randy Larkin was the thief. Others thought he was shielding the thief because he was steadfast in his refusal to tell where he had gotten the $20 bill. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had camped in the vicinity. In town for supplies, the Indian heard the talk and reported to the masked man. The Lone Ranger nodded and replied, I'm sorry to hear that Larkin is dead. Ah, him good man. And that Dorgan is still at large. Ah, him make most bad talk against young Randy. Him say maybe Randy steal money. Then him say maybe father of Randy steal it. Has Randy been arrested? No. But Sheriff talked plenty to him. Try to make him tell where cash come from. Tonto, a year ago, I thought Dorgan was a thief. I still think so. Uh, him no good. That time, I didn't know the money had a red mark so it might be identified. Dorgan know about Mark. He had the cash. He knew he couldn't spend it. He may have decided to wait for the chance to use it to hurt the son of his enemy. There must be some way to prove that Dorgan is a thief. We must find that way. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue. The Lone Ranger was determined to find some way to prove that Hank Dorgan had robbed a stagecoach and remove all suspicion from young Randy Larkin. Randy and his sister were at home soon after darkness gathered. The sheriff sat facing the two. Randy, I want to let you know that I don't suspect you of stealing Vili's payroll money. Of course Randy didn't do it, Sheriff. He was with me in Mud Flats at the time of the robbery. <clears throat> Kit, you're an honest young lady. But a lot of people in town figure you might fib to shield your brother. What? Others figure your brother is shielding the man who did steal the cash. Oh, Sheriff, I, I've told you a dozen times I, I have nothing to say. And I've asked you a dozen times, Randy. Where did you get that $20 bill? Randy, why don't you tell him? I'm not talking. Well, you're a young fool, that's all I can say. Morley's willing to give you a job on the stage line. But he won't do it with everyone in town suspecting you of being a thief or shielding a thief. I know it, Sheriff, and I'm mighty sorry. I'd like to have that job. You've given me your final word, eh? Yes. All right, then. I may as well be going. I'm sorry your brother is so stubborn, Miss Kip. Sheriff, whatever Randy does is all right with me. Well, I'll say this. You Larkins are the most loyal family I ever knew. I'll bid you good night. Good night, Sheriff. Good night. Oh, Randy, you... You'll never get a job in Badger City. Well, that being the case, Kit, there's only one thing for us to do. What? We'll try to sell this house and move. Randy, look. Huh? That masked man. Hey, uh, please don't be frightened. Who are you? How'd you get in this house? The back door was open, Randy. I took the liberty of walking in because your father was a good friend of mine. But who are You're you? You're masked. Several years ago, Randy, I gave your father a bullet. But just like this one. What? It was made of silver. What? A silver bullet? Randy, there was one in Dad's tin box. Oh, yes. Your father knew that this mask was not the sign of a crook. Why, you're the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? And your father spoke of me? Oh, yes, he did. I've uh, heard of your trouble in connection with the $20 bill. I guess everyone this side of the Mississippi's heard about it by this time. I came for further information, and, Randy, make up your mind to this. I plan to get what I came for. I want straight answers to a few questions. What... What are they? I heard that you identified the $20 bill when Dorgan showed it to you. Why, well, I guess I did. The bill he showed me was torn just like the one I gave him. Did you see the red mark on it? Before I gave it to him? I didn't notice it. It was mighty small. Are you sure you saw it later? Oh, yes, he showed it to me. Dorgan might have torn another bill, so it would look like the one you gave him. I thought of that, but... What's the use of hoping anyone would believe a story like that? Well, why are you asking these questions? Do you have red ink in the house? Well, I guess so. Yes, there's some on Dad's desk right over there. Here, Andy, is a $20 bill. Draw a circle in red ink, just like the one you saw. But why? Sakes alive, Randy. Do what the Lone Ranger says. If there was ever a time when we needed a friend, this is it. And according to Dad, he's a friend. Meanwhile, the sheriff walked slowly toward his office. The lawman liked Randy and his sister, Kit, and he had known their father well. In his heart, he couldn't believe that young Larkin had committed a crime, but the evidence against the boy was strong. Hey, sir! Yes, what? Oh, it's you, Dorgan. Yeah. Have you talked to young Larkin? I just came from their house. I talked to both Randy and Kit. I suppose he's still lying. Randy's innocent until he's proved guilty. Remember that. If you had your way, you'd let the kid get away with the robbery. And what good did it do you? He'd just go on committing other crimes until he'd finally end up on the gallows. I tell you, Sheriff, Randy should be stopped now. I'm not asking your opinion. There's plenty of folks in town who feel as I do, Sheriff. And they'll see that you do your duty. Is what are you getting at? You'll have to take action whether you want to or not. Dorgan, you run your cafe and I'll run the sheriff's office. All right, Sheriff. But I'm warning you. If you let Larkin escape punishment, it'll cost you your job. <laughs> Well satisfied with himself, Dorgan returned to his cafe. The room was crowded with townsmen who were discussing Randy Larkin and the Vealey robbery. Dorgan mingled with the customers and took part in their discussions. Dorgan is mighty lucky you happen to notice the marking on the bill Randy gave him. Well, gents, there's some folks call me overcautious. But ever since the sheriff told me to be on the lookout for that cash, I've made it a point to examine every bill. Hey, you're just doing your duty. I don't like to take credit, and I feel mighty bad about it, too after I realized that it made things look bad for Randy. I say he's shielding someone. Well, he won't get away with it, gents. 
We'll see to it that he pays for his crime. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger had hurried to the camp near town where Tonto waited. Oh, Silver, oh, is he still fella? Is he? See, young fella, Kimasabi? Yes, Tonto, and I have what I wanted. A marked bill. Now I want to borrow some of your clothing. Oh, you fixed up like Indian, huh? Yes. Get some buckskin from your saddlebag while I darken my complexion. Working by light from the campfire, the Lone Ranger removed his mask and used stain made from the bark of trees to darken his skin. Then while he changed into some of Tonto's clothing, he outlined his plan. And while I'm calling on Hank Dorgan at the cafe, I want you to speak to John Morley. I'm sure that when he hears a plan, he'll get the sheriff to help us at the showdown. It was after midnight. There were only a few people left in Dorgan's cafe when the Lone Ranger entered, looking like a stalwart Indian. You, Hank Dorgan? That's my name. Me hear plenty talk about you. Well, it looks like you didn't hear about the rules of this cafe. Now, vamoose. No, me not go. Me talk business. Buy plenty fire water. I don't do business with Indians. There's a law against it. Law never bother you in Grantville. Indian, I said clear out. Me got plenty money. I said I wasn't interested. Here, yeah, me show you. The Lone Ranger drew from his pocket what appeared to be a thick roll of paper money. Dorkin saw a $20 bill on the top. And he stared more closely. His sharp eyes perceived a small red circle in one corner. He found it hard to maintain his composure. Well, uh, that's a lot of cash, Redskin. Me tell you, me got plenty of money. Where, uh, where'd you get it? <laughs> we do business first. Then you ask questions. I'd be willing to bet you stole it. Oh, what that matter, huh? Put the cash away, Injun. Don't let anyone around here see you with that much money. Oh. Uh. It's not all of money. Now, we do business, huh? Listen, I don't mind where you got the money. Even if you stole it, it's all right with me. But I'm just curious. I didn't know anyone in these parts carried that much cash. No one carries this money. Oh. Then you must have broke into someone's house, is that it? No, oh, me not break in. Now, the door was open, huh? Too much talk. Me here on business. Listen, Injun, I can't do business here. I'll meet you somewhere else. Oh, where you meet? There's a big rock east of town. It's right near the stage trail. You know what I mean? Oh, me know. I'll meet you there. Oh, how soon you meet? Well, let's make it. One hour from now. Oh, that good. Me look for you. You not be late. You'll be seeing me, Injun. You sure will be seeing me. Baldy, I'm leaving for the night. All right, boss. What'd the redskin want? It's none of your business. No offense, boss. I just wondered that was all. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget the lockup. Dorgan left the cafe and hurried to his home at the edge of town. An old man who lived with him and attended to the chores was dozing on a sofa in the living room. He was roused by the sudden slamming of the door. What? Oh, what the Sam? Windy, get up. Yeah. Uh, sure thing, boss. I'm up. What's wrong? Is the place fire? Did you leave this house while I was at the cafe? No, sir, boss. You told me to never leave it while you were away. I wouldn't go again your orders. And you've been sleeping. Uh, well, uh, not not deep. I only dozed a little. No harm in that, is there? You slept with the door unlocked. Uh, boss, I sure wish you'd tell me what in tarnation is wrong. I'll show you what's wrong. Here, give me a hand with this trunk. Uh, sure thing. Grab a hold of it and tip it upside down. All those extra clothes will spill out, boss. That's what I want. Do as I say. Uh, and if the cash is gone, we're going out to kill an Indian. All right, then. Here goes. In the darkness behind Dorgan's house, the Lone Ranger used a bandana to wipe away the stain from his hands and face. Then he pulled off the buckskin shirt and placed it in a saddlebag. It took but a moment to pull on his own shirt and don the gun belt and hat that had been hanging from his saddle. Last of all, he placed his mask across his eyes. Meanwhile, Dorgan had pulled up a false bottom in the trunk. If you're worried about that cash, boss, it's all there. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I, I see it is. Yeah, it makes me near sick to die when I think of all that money that we can't spend. I wonder if you could. I thought that Indian had it. Uh, boss, 
You feeling all right? I'll tell you what the... The window. Hold it, both of you. Mask. The boss is holding the gun. I'm in, Sheriff. Now, what does this mean? It means you're through, Dorgan. Boss. Get him up, Dorgan. Right, Get him up. Come on, Randy. Dorgan turned from the masked man at the window and saw the sheriff followed by Morley, Jeb Veely, and Randy Larkin. He was gripped by panic when he realized that the contents of the trunk would convict him of the stagecoach robbery. Look at the cash in that trunk. Here, yeah, let me look at yeah, it. See if it's yours, Veely. I'm sure of it. I'll know as soon as I see a couple of the bills. It is mine. Boss, they got you. And you too, you lying old goat. You swore to a false alibi for Dorgan. It was a trick. I was framed. That Indian showed me a bill. Dorgan, to... uh, tell us all about it. I won't be taken alive. You'll have to shoot it out. Oh, my arm! My arm is busted. Still feel like shooting oh. it out, Dorgan? You should have known better than to go for a gun while that mask man was at the window. Listen, let me talk. He framed me. He did it. That mask man put the cash in my chest. Tell that to the jury. Oh. Meanwhile, give me that good arm. Oh. I'll decorate it with these handcuffs. Easy, easy. Winnie, give me your arm. Yeah. I'll hook you to the man you lied to help. Oh. Dad read it, boss. I knew our luck had turned sour. Soon as I heard we couldn't spend that cash. Randy. You got anything to tell the sheriff? Oh, yes. Yes, I have. Sheriff, I, I didn't want to defy the law, but I didn't know what else to do. The $20 bill I gave Dorgan came from my dad's cash box. I didn't know whether it was marked or not. I thought Dorgan might have switched it, but, well, there was no way to prove it. Randy, I'm satisfied that Dorgan carried some of that marked money just waiting to frame you. And you wouldn't talk because you figured folks would think your dad had stolen that money. I didn't want anyone to think that. Dad wasn't alive to defend himself or tell his side of it. Randy, you wanted a job with me. Well, you may have it. All I ask is that you be half as loyal to me as you've been to your father. Oh, golly. Golly, thanks, Mr. Morley. Son, you should never have had a minute's doubt about your dad. If he hadn't been every inch a good man, he wouldn't have had a friend like the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, and directed by Fred Flowerday. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.